ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Never FDIC. Welcome into this Wednesday, September 11th edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program this hour when we open up the Miller Lite phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. Miller Lite, whole true, great taste, only 96 calories. It is the original light beer. You can also find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. The show is on Facebook by searching The Drive with Paul Swan. Coming up today on the program, 530, we've got Rob Cornelius. He will be joining us through the telephone I originally was going to have him in studio, and we are going to talk to him a little bit longer, but his schedule couldn't mesh. So uh, we're going to talk to him about 5.30 today. He is the analyst on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. We'll talk to him about the Bobcats and the Herd. And then coming up here in a few minutes, big announcement today from Marshall, Thundering Herd, announcing that they have purchased the Flint Group Pigments property. So with that purchase, the Herd Rises campaign can officially begin. Marshall Director of Athletics Mike Hamrick will be on the program with us here in a few short minutes to talk about that and the importance of the Herd Rises campaign. And this thing is really tangible now. Marshall's got the property. And this isn't just a dream everyone's been hoping for and pointing to. This is actually getting to really crunch time now. So uh, Mr. Hamrick will be on the program with us in a few minutes to talk about that. And as I mentioned, we'll get your phone calls in later on in the program as we have time, as that allows, because we got a lot to get into today. Um, I don't even know if this is a story yet, but let me talk about Marshall football just for a second, because we were looking at schedules yesterday, kind of joking around that Marshall and Ohio should play a little bit more. Hey, what's the holdup? Where's the schedule holes here we can fill? We were having fun with that yesterday, and... I didn't realize it at the time. I don't think I spotted it or noticed it that I haven't seen an announcement yet on Marshall and Bowling Green. And according to FBSSchedules.com, and apparently there was a follow-up story where they actually went out and put together a Freedom of Information Act request and got some information from Bowling Green. Marshall at Bowling Green will take place on October 1st, 2022. And this is according to FBSSchedules.com. Bowling Green is at Marshall on September 25th, 2027. And we spotted the story today because uh, this is a, a recent occurrence. So I'm just going to leave it out there. I haven't seen anything official. If, I, if there is an official announcement and I missed it, I apologize up front. I didn't see it and I haven't seen it. But... That's what your schedule looks like on the 22 year and the 27 year of this uh, of this century. Marshall at Bowling Green on October 1st, 2022. Bowling Green at Marshall on September 25th, 2027. So that's where we're at with that. Now, softball, we did get a schedule release from them today, and they've got some fall ball dates announced for you. They're going to have a green and black scrimmage on Saturday, September 28th at 11 a.m. They're going to play softball the very next day on September 29th as Ohio Valley comes to Huntington. There will be a doubleheader there, first pitch set for 1 p.m. Marshall will face off against three opponents in October. West Liberty for a single game on the 6th, 1 p.m. West Virginia State will play a single game on October 13th at 1 p.m. And then there's a doubleheader against Fairmont State on October 19th. That also begins at 1 p.m. So we get the schedule news there today for Marshall softball. And, of course, if you've been following along, Marshall men's soccer looks pretty good right now. Back-to-back home wins now. They're they're winning. You want that. 2-1 victory over East Tennessee State. Action last night from Hoops Family Field. They're 3-0-1 now, and uh, they beat East Tennessee State. That team falls to 1-3. So, a lot coming up, a lot going on. Of course, our primary focus today will be Ohio. We'll talk about the Bobcats with Rob here a little bit later on the program. And, of course, here in a few minutes, uh, we're going to talk with Mr. Hamrick, Mike Hamrick, the Director of Athletics, Marshall University. This is a big day. This is an important day. There's been a lot of people 
maybe didn't believe this day would happen. There have been a, probably uh, some of you that maybe were skeptical, even when they made the announcement. They had the press conference. We had a we had a design, sort of an artist rendition of what the field might look like. I know there's a lot more going on. This feels like this is really the cornerstone of a revitalization of that section of Huntington. And I know there are a lot more projects that are going on. Probably we can talk to you a little bit later on in the month. Maybe we get the, the mayor of Huntington, Steve Williams, to come on and talk a little bit about some of the projects. If there's anything really moving forward there, it's kind of been quiet on that front. But it hasn't been quiet on the baseball front because that's been taken care of now. So the Thundering Herd, can you get a baseball park going? University purchasing that Flint Group Pigments property. And if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, it's that property between 3rd and 5th Avenue. And so they purchased the property from the Huntington Municipal Development Authority. That's going to be the land that your future baseball stadium is going to sit upon. And I'm looking forward to it. March of 2021, set the open, March of 2021. That's a quick turnaround. It's a quick timetable, but I think they can get it done. I mean, this is a big deal. Facilities are always a big deal, but this is, I think, the biggest deal since the football stadium. This might be even, I'll put it up there. I won't say it will be more important than the indoor complex, but I would say it's right there. It's probably one of the top three facility stadium. That facility that serves all of athletics, baseball park, because baseball didn't have a park. They really haven't had a first-class facility. And so this is, once again, progress for Marshall University. And it's, it's a big deal. It's a big ask also. I mean, it's a huge ask to ask the, the alumni, ask the donors to get behind this project. But I think at the same time, this has been a project where a lot of people, I'm sure, have worn Mr. Hamrick out about, hey, when are we going to get a baseball park? When are we going to get a baseball park? I'm sure he's heard that several times over the several years he's been the athletic director at Marshall. And I know in the back of his mind, he's got the plan and I, I just need the property. I'm sure that's um, really been something that has not left his thoughts when it comes to the overall grand scheme of things when putting together the plan for Marshall University athletics and seeing what you can do property-wise, facility-wise. It's, it's a huge deal. And, of course, now this kicks off the Herd Rises campaign, $22 million fundraising effort to make sure that the stadium is a reality. So they're starting off uh, constructing this thing in March. That's what they want to do. Make this thing happen. Start breaking ground March. Have it open. A year later, that's an ambitious timetable. And I think they're really trying to make sure they get this thing done right and get it done quickly. Part of that is because you're trying to make sure that the guy that was promised the stadium years ago, Jack Cook, he gets to see it. Because let's be candid, he's getting up there at age, and he's even remarked about that. And so there might be some urgency here. And yeah, I would play on those strings a little bit. I would tug your string on that, your heart strings on that right now, because that's a guy that's given everything to Marshall Athletics, Marshall Baseball, was promised a facility like this, and he's heard it all before. And so now we've got something tangible for him. All right, I'll tell you what. We're going to take our first break. When we come back from break, we're going to hear from Marshall University Athletic Director Mike Hamrick. We'll discuss this in greater detail about the purchase today of the Flint Group Pigments property. Also, the Herd Rises campaign. So all that's coming up when we continue with today's edition of The Drive here, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Big day for the Thundering Herd as we find out earlier this afternoon that the Thundering Herd purchased the Flint Group Pigment property. Uh, We're going to uh, speak with 
Marshall University Athletic Director Mike Hamrick here in a moment about that. Also, the Herd Rises campaign officially begins, and uh, I do believe we've got Mr. Hamrick on the phone now. So let's welcome to the program Marshall Director of Athletics, Mike Hamrick. Thank you, sir, for spending a few minutes with us this afternoon. Really another big day for Herd Athletics and for uh, Thundering Herd baseball fans. Well, first of all, Paul, thank you for having me on. I mean, it's an honor and privilege uh, to be on your show. Uh, It is a great day. Uh, We announced, as you probably mentioned earlier, we announced uh, that we have purchased a piece of property that we can now build a a long, long, long awaited. uh, This is, um, I'm sure, been something that's always been a top priority for you, but the pieces until recently just never fell into place because I'm sure you've had to field those questions time and time again. Uh, when's the baseball park happening? When's the baseball park happening? Well, I've heard that for 10 years since I've been here. And I think uh, Coach Jack Cook is 90. I think Coach Cook's 93. Uh, I think he heard that from the first day he took over as Marshall baseball coach 50, maybe 50, 60 years ago. I'm not sure, but uh, it's here. It's a reality. Uh, the, the one hold up over all the years has been, where are you going to build the stadium? And, and my thought was I was going to hold out until we got the, the right place, uh, by campus in the middle of our community. And, uh, and guess what, Paul, we got it, my friend, we got it. You've had some pretty good partners, um, including uh, Marshall's uh, best friend probably uh, uh, in politics, uh, and that's uh, Huntington Mayor Steve Williams. Uh, you guys have really made a great team trying to make this thing uh, a reality. I'm sure you've done most of the work. You know, he likes to take a little bit more credit than he probably deserves. Well, he's a politician, and I'm not. But, uh, hey, Steve, Steve, Mayor, Steve Williams, Mayor Williams, uh, we were college teammates in the 70s on the football team at Marshall, and We've been we've been like brothers ever since, and uh, it, this could not have been done without the mayor of Huntington. And he stepped up, and from from day one, we've talked about this. It's it's, it's been a vision we've had, and and he's been great. Uh, my boss, Dr. Jerry Gilbert, is a bait. By the way, he's a baseball fan, and uh, he's he's been right there with us. And and it's taken a little bit longer than what I personally wanted it to. Uh, it's been 10 years and uh, since I've been here. But, uh, again, we own the land, uh, the, the Flint Pigment property uh, north of uh, Fifth Avenue towards Third Avenue. And, and uh, we have the land. That was the start. The architect is currently uh, finishing up the drawings of what we think will be a 20 to $22 million baseball stadium. State of the art. Uh, it will be by far the best baseball stadium in this state, uh, in this area. And uh, but now the hard work comes, Paul, and and uh, we've got to go out and and we've got to raise that money privately. And we we can do it. We have done it. And uh, the first person I'm going to come and see is no, not you, Paul. It's going to be Mike Kirtner, so you might want to warn him in the morning. I'm coming to see him. Okay, I will warn him, and uh, of course we can remind him again. Oh, that's right, he won't be there tomorrow during your show, um, which uh, will air uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I mean, this is a big announcement, and Mike Kirtner's not going to be there. Well, I'm kind of glad he's not going to be here. I hear, hear enough of him during the week, but but it but it is, and 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 it's as, as we look back. I mean, we've had a really really good Division One baseball program, and we've probably called our home field tw- called twenty different places our our home field, and from Charleston to Chillicothe to St. Clouds to Route Two to wherever, and and now. Within two years, uh, we, we hope, that's our hope, within two years, uh, we'll have something that everybody in this community, uh, everybody associated with Marshall uh, can, can, can really be proud of. And, and, and you know, Paul, I, I look at a guy who was, I was really close with when I was a student athlete at Marshall was Coach Jack Cook, and I'm sure you, you, you guys have talked about him, but about six months ago when I told Coach Cook where we were going, what what the future looked like. I mean, he grinned from ear to ear, and, and I told him it was going to take a little bit of time to get the land, but we were going to get it, and it was going to take a little bit of time to raise the money, 
but with his help and everyone else's help, we could do it. And Coach Cook looked at me and he said, hey, Mike, he said, I want you to listen to me. And you got to understand he's 93 years old, I think. I think he's 93. He says, I'm rounding third and I'm heading home. And so you better hurry the heck up. And, and I said, Coach, we're going to hurry up. I said, but I want to tell you one thing. I'm going to be that third base coach, and I'm going to stop you right now just for a little bit and give us a, give us a couple years, and uh, you will see something that you're very, very proud of. Is he part of the reason why the timetable might look, at least on the surface, ambitious? Uh, you hope to be breaking ground in March and then in 2021, same time uh, next year, be in that ballpark. That's our, Paul, that's our hopes. And now I didn't say that's going to happen, but that's what we hope to do. We've got to, we've got to go out and get the money. And if everybody that has told me the last 10 years complained about not having a baseball park, if the facility for Marshall or for Huntington, if, if they all contribute to this, heck, we could have it done next week. There's been so many people, but, uh, Coach Cook's a legend here. He's a, he's a, gr- first of all, he's a great person. He had such a positive, uh, influence an impact on so many people's life. He's so well-liked. Uh, we want to hurry up and get this thing done for him. But at the same time, I mean, I want these student-athletes now, the future baseball players that come to Marshall University to have first-class place uh, uh, to play. And, and this will be a first-class facility. Marshall Director of Athletics Mike Hamrick joining us on the program. Now with the announcement today, as we uh, touched on, the Herd Rises campaign truly begins, and this is an important campaign. How can fans, supporters, everybody who's complained that you don't have a ballpark, you know, anybody who wants to contribute, how do they get a part of this and make this thing a reality? Well, first of all, they can call the Big Green Scholarship Foundation office. Uh, we've actually, the last three or four months, Paul, we've, we've made a lot of calls to some people and told them about what was happening, and we've actually... Uh, solicited several donations already and it's going really well to be honest with you but i mean we really haven't geared this thing up like we're going to gear it up here in the next next four or five months and uh that's about what we got four or five six months to get this thing done and and uh, uh we, we we've proven that we can do it uh with the vision campaign uh we've we've, we've proven that people will 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 support us and help us out and uh uh that was successful and we've got to do it one more time and, and when we finished our vision campaign where we where we we raised 33 million dollars uh paul when we finished that we told people now as soon as we finish we're going to give you a little room to breathe we're going to take a little break but in college athletics things don't stand still you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards and if it, or you don't stay the same because you stay the same, you're moving backwards. And we told all our supporters, we want to move forward. And, and, and so many of them have been so great to us already. And, and I, I really believe I'm, I'm very positive about this. I'm very optimistic that, that people will rally behind this. And, and it, it just means so much to Marshall University, which we know means so much to Huntington. But at the same time, it means so much to our community and our city and, and, and what we're trying to do here and, and what the mayor, Steve Williams, is trying to do. He's just, I mean, I, I don't get into politics. I can't. But I tell you what, that guy's been with, on my side uh, from, from the minute I, I, I arrived here. And we've talked about this baseball stadium. And, and, I mean, who would have ever believed that Steve Williams would go out and win the award that our city won? And some of that money now, Paul, is going to be used build a a 20 million dollar plus baseball stadium how about that i'm excited marshall director of athletics mike hamrick joining us on the program and what excites me even more is not only will we get the baseball park and everything that goes along with that is this is the cornerstone of what can be an exciting revitalization not only for that part of huntington but just in general, uh, honey, all of Huntington will benefit from that. I mean, that's exciting to me that there's a, possibly uh, this baseball park is going to be the spark that really revitalizes uh, Huntington and that area specifically. I, I don't think there's any question, Paul. Look at what our soccer facility has done for the for the Highlawn neighborhood and uh, what it what how many people come and visit that and use that. I was there last night 
and we had a soccer match there, and we had a, had a really good crowd. But that facility's used every day, whether it's Marshall or whoever, and it brings people to Huntington. They they shop in our stores, they buy our gas, they eat in our restaurants, and and they stay in our hotels. And if and if we're going to prosper as a community, well, you got to continue to build things. And 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 I just so happen to be in the athletic facility building business, but I see what they do for for our community. I've seen what Marshall Athletics does for our community, and this is just. This is really going to be a, a, a diamond in in that area that I believe I agree with you, and I think the mayor uh, uh, agrees with both of us that this is going to really help revitalize uh, that area of, of our community. Marshall Director of Athletics Mike Hamrick with us on the program. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me this afternoon. Uh, you've got a busy week, of course, the Battle for the Bell coming up this weekend, among other activities. and. Uh, I know I'm excited to see Ohio come back in here, and uh, I hope that the Marshall's walking away with a bell on Saturday. Well, it's a great rivalry, and and uh, it's been a long time rivalry, and we, we you know we've got it back. We're playing up there next year, and then we've uh, renewed the series. Uh, I think four or five years down the road, and that's how you schedule in football. We're going to continue to play, and I I just think it's a great game for us. I think it's a great game for them, and and we anticipate. A very, very good crowd. So if you haven't got your tickets, uh, you probably need to get out and get them. It's supposed to be a beautiful evening, and it's going to be a great, uh, great evening for college football. It's, it's our our uh, Hall of Fame uh, game where we are going to induct, uh, I believe, nine people into our Athletic Hall of Fame. And so it's, it's going to be a great weekend for us. Marshall Director of Athletics, Mike Hamrick, with us on the program. Mike, thanks for spending some time with us today. I uh, hope to see you soon on Saturday. Okay, Paul, thank, thank you very much for having me. That's Mike Hamrick. Baseball Park is closer to being a reality, and uh, with the purchase today or the acquisition of the land, it's in Marshall's hands now. Uh, you can get to work on fundraising, and you can make sure that uh, you've got everything in, in its proper place before you break ground. It's closer to being a reality with uh, today's uh, purchase of that property. When we come back from break, uh, we're going to hear from Rob Cornelius. He's going to join us. He is the longtime analyst on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield IMG College Broadcast. I'm going to ask him, uh, do they like to be known as the Ohio Sports Network or the Ohio Sports Network? We'll find out when we continue with today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Buckle up. Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm telling you, this is a jam-packed show today. We just spoke with the athletic director of Marshall University, Mike Hamrick, and uh, we're following that up with Rob Cornelius now. You might you might know him from his Twitter account, but uh, really you know the guy from being the longtime analyst for the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Um, Rob joins us on the program now. Is that the appropriate way to refer to the network, the Ohio Sports Network? Well, I think we can do it today. Ohio State lost the lawsuit, so they can't put the or mandate. They're the only ones who can say the in front of anything. So we can go definite article in front of pretty much anything you want. Uh, the Kurtner Broadcast Empire, the Paul Swan, the Mike Hammer. You get it. I like it. Here we go. Uh, I knew this is a, a good day then to have you on the program. Battle for the Bells back. Um, it's um, it's also been renewed down the line. We're going to have this thing happen again in a few more years after we wrap up this round and. When you ask Marshall players, hey, what do you know about Ohio, the battle for the bell, they've heard of it. It's not really something that uh, they've been a part of. Uh, is that the same vibe we're getting from uh, Bobcat players this week as they get ready for this thing? Same deal. None of us can believe it's been four years since we last did this thing. You guys were trotting out Bird Song as quarterback at that, that point in that season. And you're right, most of the kids in both his teams weren't there. They were at best in their red shirt year. And Again, the issue being you guys recruit a lot out of the area. Ohio recruits a lot out of the area. It's not like there's a lot of, you know, Ironton kids or Point Pleasant kids from this rivalry and think it's a big thing, but it always is. And especially during the, the Grove and the, the era with Frank Solich, Ohio is often, for better or worse, burned their best game of the year, their best effort against Marshall. And that's meant for Frank Solich, four wins and three losses in that span. I guess the factoid that really stands out, even though Marshall and Ohio haven't played in in a little while, is um, this is going to be the 60th meeting. This is Marshall's longest 
opponent, or this is the opponent they have played the most. This will be the 60th meeting. Series is 33-26 in favor of Ohio. Of course, the herd has been pretty good in the uh, last nine meetings in Huntington, 13 of the last 19. We can go over all of that, but uh, Coach Solich has been really good against Doc Holliday. No, you're, you're right. I mean, sometimes it, you win, sometimes you lose. Other times, Randy Moss throws a foot goal over McDonald's. But that's like 20-plus years ago, so that's probably not how this thing ends. Look, uh, I'm with you, and again, I defer to people above our pay grade like Hamrick and like the new AD, Julie Cromer at Ohio, to decide if we should do this more often. But um, every year wouldn't bother me, wouldn't bother a lot of fans. Certainly basketball should probably be that way. As long as the series stays reasonably competitive, and by that I mean the opposite of Miami University versus Cincinnati, which is out of hand. As long as it stays competitive, I think it doesn't relate to net positive for both these both these squads, both these groups. Let's hope we, we keep on doing it. But the RERAC, I guess they signed last week, is for 2025 and 2027, I believe. That's right. We're going to um, we're going to see the Bobcats coming to Huntington on 2025, and then the uh, trip to Athens will be on 2027, September 11th, uh, to be exact. So we'll see each other again a few more times. Yeah, do that. Do that a little bit more. I mean, you look what uh, for Ohio game wise. I think the kids. The kids are excited. The kids want to get well, and they were real disappointed last week at Pitt. Uh, Twenty to ten loss. Offense just really never got going. Pitt's a good defense, a very ordinary big conference school offense. They really weren't that impressive, but Ohio didn't force them to be. Um, Pitt got a ton of stops. Nathan Rourke, for the first time seemingly ever, at least probably a year, was responsible for zero touchdowns. Didn't run for one. Didn't pass for one. And he's a guy sitting at like eighty combined touchdowns career right there in the same. Part of the record book is Tyler Kettleton, who just frankly tore Marshall apart. Um, he's the best quarterback Ohio's had in a very long time, if not ever, you know, right there with Kettleton. And if he's healthy, he had a little bit of strep last week, was not sick, not himself. And two things happened. He didn't really want to want to run the football. And Pitt's defense basically looked at every option, you know, option offensive play from Ohio and forced him to make the pitch, make the handoff. And said, beat us with your running back and your offensive line that's due, and it's pretty good but not amazing, and Ohio couldn't do that. Ohio didn't break a run over eight yards last week. You're know, used to watching Ohio and seeing that occasional home run run. You're going to run in 60% of plays, but someone's going to bust one every now and again. Well, no one did. Um, so that combined with an end zone drop, uh, an interception drop on a drive where Pitt scored, and Ohio loses that one, and frankly, it felt way more distant than 10 points in a 20-10 uh, to 10 loss. On the flip side, What's the Ohio yep. impression of that Marshall defense? That's the standout against Boise State. Offense had its problems, but the defense really stood and stood and stood. But a fair criticism from Doc Holliday is they still couldn't get Boise off the field to get the offense back out there for a few more shots at this thing. So I mean, they, they were bend but don't break. And uh, what's Ohio? No, you're, you're right. I mean, that, that defense looks really, really good on TV. We were sitting there watching Pittsburgh. We went up a day or two early. Uh, did, you know, extra radio, extra video stuff a couple of days before myself and Brent Russ Eisenstein the network. Um, we watched that game, and you're right, Marshall couldn't get off the field. The play count was ridiculous. Like, I think it was like Boise had 80 snaps and Marshall had 45 or something, and they held, and they held, and they held. And of course, Boise committed some turnovers, so a lot of those plays were for not. But you're right, Marshall's defense looked athletic, looked strong, and they just need to look at the pit tape. It's like basically the deal was right now force Ohio to beat you with the running backs. And the running back unit was really strong two weeks ago. Uh, Julian Ross in his, in his third year took a red shirt on injury in the last couple, but he was expected to be the starter. Uh, he has not been. O'Shawn Allison, a uh, smaller running back, uh, second-year player, has been the starter. will start this week. Ross is going to be out this week, most likely with a shoulder. So you're going to see big doses of Allison as a little guy and a new guy from junior college from Texas named Demontre Tuggle, uh, who has three quick running touchdowns in two games, but he's spectacular on the tape, a lot of jump cuts, dude can fly, but in pass protection, he's not there yet. So you have a trust factor, especially if you get into passing downs with Puggle, you're not sure if he's a pass blocker yet, and Allison, again, is a smaller running back, and again, these five, seven running backs are not the most amazing blitz pickup guys. So you have a strong offensive unit, but you're down one of those running backs already, and you're still trying to figure out who the receivers are. Um, two straight weeks, works completed passes to eight or nine guys, spread it around. There's not a dominant guy yet. No one is the guy. There's no obvious guy who's going to be a, a Sunday player yet. Someone will be in this group, and there's a couple guys who are scary on tape, but he's spreading it around, and there's not a guy he leans on. 
and also not enough tight end usage in this offense. Tight end's got to block and catch in this offense, and you've not gotten a ton of that out of that group last year or this year. Joining us on the program, Rob Cornelius. He is an analyst for the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Of course, coming to Huntington, Marshall will be hosting the Bobcats. It's going to be a fun one, 6.30 p.m. Hopefully we'll get you on stage uh, for our pregame a little sooner. But uh, I'm, I know you're disappointed. You're actually going to come down today and make the Huntington run. You, you weren't able to because uh, I know you, <laughs> you, like, to, um, you like to sample the, uh, the flavors of Huntington when you're in Huntington. Oh, no, there, there, there's so much to do, so much to see. I'm sure the Convention Visitors Bureau has a pamphlet for me. No, man, I, I like going on anything. You know that. That's, uh, that's quasi, you know, quasi close enough to home. Mom went there when it was Marshall College and remembers it fondly, and she probably wouldn't recognize the area around downtown right now, but she thinks Wiggins is still open, which whatever that was. Um, anyway, no, I like, I like coming down there. We're going to have a good time. Your fans are aggressive, and they're going to have all day to, to party and get their dander up. So a Bobcat fan's been warned, but my buddies on the tailgate, uh, my group tailgates with a big Canadian flag for our quarterback, Nathan Rourke, who is Canadian. He and his brother, Curtis, will be on the trip, both Canadian, and uh, we're really into that thing. So if you want to find my people, the Canadian flag will be there, and uh, please be nice. I think we'll be nice. Uh, I'm, we're well, always we nice. Are. Yeah, we're always are. nice. I mean, you're invited to come do the stage show with me. I mean, you, you know happy, that. Happy to do it. Seriously, ping me, text me. We'll, we'll stop on by because we'll be down there nice and early all day, and uh, having a good time with that. But I think you guys do a good product and obviously we've known, you know, you and, and Steve and the whole gang, Cornwell and, and, and you know, Woodrum's all these guys all these years. And it's old home week for me. A lot of friends, that media group that we cover, a lot of friends in the stands. Again, that's why we want to do it every year. We have a good time. We're treated well. We appreciate the rivalry and we appreciate the Frank Solch has a winning record in it. Um, that, that's been, that's been a nice turn. So, you know, you guys are good. Um, Got to score some runs though. And, that's the issue. It's a, it's a weird Ohio defense. The best players right now is Ohio defense from the back end. Uh, this is a year where safeties and corners are probably the best units instead of it being a dominant front seven. So there are some yards there to be gotten. Um, it's going to be real entertaining. I don't think anyone has a whole lot of feel for either of these two teams. Both had a week one against a one double A in FCS, and Ohio is probably one little better than yours, but Ohio, I think, was less impressive than y'all's game at Boise. So um, this is fun. Rubber meets the road. I think both these teams, um, at least I know from the Marshall side, these guys um, have said time and time again when we talk to them that uh, this is a good, physical, strong team, a lot of respect. I think Doc even said that the, everybody on that team, they're a bunch of clones. It's a Frank Solage team, just full of, uh, I guess, maybe a little mini Frank Solages, all of them on the team. They're all just like him. Well, no, that, that's what we need, guys who are quiet, work hard, and do everything a lot of purpose, and you can't tell how old they are. That's the beauty of the flame about Frank. It's like, he's this little dude, and he's tough, and he can go knock out 300 push-ups in front of you, and you can't tell whether he's 55 or 80. He's somewhere in between. But the dude is in peak condition. All he does is eat, drink, sleep, and think football. And we're just thrilled to have him, and hopefully he's still around we do this thing uh, two more times in a few years. Again, he'll he'll quit when he wants to, but I don't think he wants to do his any, anywhere close right now. This has been... So far, the um, the year that a lot of people are pointing to is this is this is the year. This is Ohio's year. Doc has even mentioned this. This is the year that that Ohio's pick to win it all. Uh, is um, in this game notwithstanding, push this one aside. Is this the year Ohio is the champion of the MAC? Uh, obviously, pick to win the East, going away, uh, pick to win the whole thing, slightly gold medal, but just barely over Toledo in the West. Uh, I think barring injuries, yeah. Uh, because once this thing gets into league play, Ohio will be incredibly solid. Even though, even if you know September were to go poorly and Ohio loses the next two, um, they will have a fix for conference. And you know how it is in this league. Unless you're going 12 and 0, the only thing that matters is conference season. You're in a you know rotator of bowls. And Ohio at this point now, they get so much respect because of the way Frank Frank has fixed this thing. You know, you put Ohio down for 8.25 wins every year, and generally speaking, you're right. You know, last year Ohio had max only bowl win. And Max not winning many bowls right now, but Ohio certainly has been. So you've got the best quarterback, one of the two best quarterbacks in team history from the passing side is here. Uh, he's got tools around him. He's got a pretty good defense. Yeah, this probably is the year because the league itself is not terrifying. You don't look at any of these other teams and see very many pros or anybody who just, just you know, freaking you out. Ohio misses Toledo. We, we play him in Detroit in the Max Championship game. That's the assumption. Um, the schedule's not not super super difficult. I think the league is the league is not amazing. Uh, Miami and Buffalo are not what they were last year. 
Um, there's new coaches, you know, Akron and BG. You close with them. They're the two worst teams in the league. So there's a lot of good news on the schedule. I think Ohio probably ends up right where they need to be, probably. You would like to guess nine wins and uh, a trip to Detroit because Ohio is, and you'll, you'll like this, the Toronto Maple Leafs of this league has not won this thing since 1968. So you're at 51 plus years um, as, you know, premier brand name in this league and just have not gotten it done. I've not finished it off. I do like that, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, um, which team's the Montreal Canadiens? Because I, I want to hate that team. Uh, honestly, probably Miami. Fair. And, you know, you guys don't belong with Miami at all, but, I mean, they're the ones who put up title after title after title and now have been mostly irrelevant over the last decade. Perfect. So that's yeah. just like the Canadians. The Canadians won the uh, Cup in 93 and then pretty much been vaporized. So, there you go. Yeah, there, yeah, I cursed them that day. I don't know if you knew that. That's that's I'm no no. What, what, they, what, they beat, what the Kings? What Kings with Gretzky and yes. other guys hurt or something? There was it was a weird year. Canadians on paper had no business winning that, but they did. So. That was a re- that was a year I cursed them, and I meant to yep. curse the Canadians, meaning that team. I didn't mean to curse all of Canada. So uh, I apologize. Oh sure, for sure, sure. And right now with the exchange rate being what it is, I suggest you guys tour Canada a lot. It's very very cheap to be there. Joining us on the program, um, good friend, Rob Cornelius. He's the analyst for the Ohio Sports Network. Uh, he will be in Huntington on Saturday, if not sooner. Be nice to him. Take care of him. Uh, invite him to your tailgate. Share your food with him. Open your hearts to him. Uh, welcome him. Um, <laughs> you know, and, um, I mean, come on. You're, come on, you're lovable. You're, you're, you're like the most lovable. I'm, 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 just, I'm just fun. And we've all grown up since, like, the 90s when we were just, you know, down there just hanging out one of the game you know bartending in the captain d's bathroom or whatever you know but you know they used to go it was a different time then yeah exactly but uh, you'll be uh, you'll be here on saturday and of course uh, you make you make trips now and then you know you do i mean done come on i mean love to stop by we're tutors right tutors <laughs> tutors is good although we have one in parkersburg and marietta now so when i'm when i'm around home uh, we can do that but no uh, again Yours is my local cookout. I'm really into cookout. I don't think they're a sponsor for you, but uh, that works for me. That's my Huntington. That's, remember, last time I was on with you, I think Jansen Williams, East from the South, and he wasn't even big on cookout. It was a very weird, weird interchange we had. Yeah, yeah I got to talk to that kid. I mean, I got to yeah. work on him. Um, yeah, he, he was okay as an intern. I mean, I get, <laughs> he was okay. Just, I mean, just okay. I mean, I got to talk to him, though. He's got to focus on basketball, That's though. Fine. Um, you know what? Sure. I'll tell you what we can do. We'll get you to come down one yeah. day. We'll take a sales rep down to cookout and just tell them, look, make it happen. Sponsor no, the show. So many, so many styrofoam cups, 300 milkshake flavors. You guys need to get it done. So. I'm, I'm with you. Rob Cornelius, the Ohio Sports Network. Uh, we hit the stage three hours before the game. Um, so if you're in town three hours wow. before the game. I, well, yeah. I mean, we, we're, text we're, me. I'll, I'll, I'll find you. I'll stop over. Look for my Canadian flag. Um, I'm normal and nice. So. Okay, we'll do it. Uh, Gate C, uh, Westlot Gate C, three hours for the game. We go an hour. Done. Uh, yeah, because um, that's all I can handle with uh, Cornwell and Company, an hour. <laughs> Love you guys. I'll see you Saturday afternoon, Jess. Thank you, sir. Rob Cornelius joining us, the Ohio Sports Network. We'll come back and wrap it up. This is The Drive, ESPN, 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're taking Paul Swan everywhere. Download or subscribe to The Drive with Paul Swan on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Been a fun show today. I want to thank Marshall University Athletic Director Mike Hamrick for being on the program today. Also, Rob Cornelius from the Ohio Sports Network. Appreciate both of those guys. So tomorrow, not sure what the game plan is just yet. I do know this. Uh, tomorrow, we've got a full evening of Herd Athletics for you because after this show, we will have Inside Herd Athletics with Marshall University Athletic Director Mike Hamrick. Uh, we'll have the Doc Holiday Show, and that's coming up all tomorrow right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So I'm excited for those guys. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we got a lot to get into tomorrow, of course. Recap a little bit on that Boise State game with Doc, and then look ahead to this Ohio game. Battle for the Bell. I'm excited. I'm a little bit more excited today than I was maybe yesterday or the day before. I just had to get closer to it. But I would love to see this happen every year. I know scheduling, you can't do that. And we touched on the schedule earlier. There's not an official release out just yet. So you know, until it's official, all I can say is that fbschedules.com or fbsschedules.com has reported or they've, they've put up that Marshall and Bowling Green, and they apparently 
got a hold of a couple of contracts with Bowling Green to to see what's going on. And that's all I can say is that's what they're saying the schedule looks like. So if you look at it and if this is actually true, which uh, until we get official comment or official release of these dates, and I'm sure that'll come eventually. Because Bowling Green hasn't even announced it yet. So Bowling Green nor Marshall has agreed, uh, agreed to, you know, I mean, this could be something they're working on. But if you look at the schedule, you've got Notre Dame, Appalachian State, Bowling Green on the, uh, in 2022, and then 2027 at Ohio, and then you play host to Bowling Green. So you're at Notre Dame, you're at Bowling Green in 2022, and then Appalachian State comes in to Jones C. Edwards Stadium. Again, uh, I'm just going off uh, FBSschedules.com. There's been some reporting on this that the, uh, they uh, get a hold of documents to indicate this is a deal. However, until it's announced, um, it falls in the rumor and speculation department. Uh, but at the same time, though, uh, I will comment on it just to say I like it. I like playing Bowling Green. Uh, actually, Bowling Green was one of my more desirable locations to go to. I, I actually liked going to Bowling Green when I did head up and travel a little bit. It was a lot easier to travel in those Mid-American Conference days than it is now. Uh, you could car, you could van, you could bus to a lot of these destinations. And they were always, I mean, now it's its changed a little bit. They're not what they once were, but it was always a, a nice place to go watch a football game. And, and they were always uh, very, very polite, very professional up there. So I like Bowling Green. That's one of the uh, few Mac schools that I do like. And uh, I like the helmets as well. So uh, there's that. But that's what the schedule looks like uh, if you go by this. 2022. And Ohio, I would love to see maybe down the line you could work it in, but Ohio is pretty jam-packed. Uh, I don't see an opening here anytime uh, in the near future because they have a full slate in 2021, 2022, 2023. Then they pick Marshall back up in 2025. And then again, 2027 for Ohio. Probably the, the only two dates that could work out uh, over the next few years. Marshall just about full across the board. We'll see. That's going to do it for this edition of the program. Once again, thanks to Marshall Athletic Director Mike Hamrick for being on the program today. Also, Rob Cornelius joining us from the Ohio Sports Network. We'll hear from him hopefully on Saturday. We're inviting everyone to the stage. Uh, over on the West Lot, Gate C, we want you to come on over and be a part of the show three hours before kickoff. We'll see you there. For everyone here, Kendrick Communications, I'm Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in for today's edition of The Drive. Until tomorrow, have a great evening, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.